Thank you very much. I um, appreciate the invitation. Um, we uh, have a truly collaborative uh, approach to diagnosis of thoracic disease at Johns Hopkins, and uh, we're very pleased to um, show the case. Uh, transthoracic needle um, procedures have been around for a long time and certainly um, would um, be seen as the most common procedure to diagnose pulmonary uh, lung nodules, but certainly uh, to find a case that makes it interesting, I've chosen a, a fairly controversial to illustrate some findings. That no doubt you'd, we've done thousands of cases very safely and well. These are my disclosures. None of them um, affect the content of this talk. Um, just an illustrative uh, a case with a 67-year-old patient with uh, excellent uh, residual performance status, um, stage one, a 30-pack year history with mild COPD, poorly controlled uh, hypertension and diabetes, and actually had a previous stage one uh, left upper lobe uh, lobectomy five years prior um, and a new lesion in the left lower lobe, and the question was kind of where do we go from here? Um, just a scanogram, but it would represent the chest X-ray. You can see the uh, volume loss in the right upper lobe with compensatory hypertrophy and uh, surgical markings in the apex um, relating to the lesion. And this is the change. Uh, so this patient had been found on his uh, chest, uh, chest infection nodule and changed over three months from five millimeters to 18 millimeters and a fairly soft um, uh, lesion. We uh, performed a PET as well and SUV was indeterminate at 1.5. So we're kind of dealing with this sort of a single sub Part so a solid nodule, peripheral, ex smoker, um, and the concern was, you know, is this a, a, a new primary or this is a, 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 a new met? So certainly this was uh, trying to determine if you go and stick to the, the, the guidelines and this certainly would probably fall under the intermediate. If we go and uh, figure out the staging um, scoring systems, malignancy risk under several um, systems score it at about 39 to 50%. So certainly in terms of the algorithm, you follow the uh, algorithm, the non-surgical biopsy probably is the best way to go. Certainly in, um, in our setting, um, the need for tissue is just amplified in multi-organ systems. Uh, so our role in diagnosis is really just enlarged, not just in the lung. So certainly I think getting tissue is, is getting more and more um, needed as well as um, at times challenging. So this is an interesting case and fairly, this is a done in a sister hospital to ours which uh, f looks fairly typical and, and would occur in almost any interventional suite. The patient's now placed prone with a posterior approach with a peripheral posterior lesion. You can see the approach now where the needle had been um, numbed up. This patient is under moderate sedation and needle uh, gets a first pass and uh, the 18 gauge needle get, gets the pass and on uh, uh, specimen uh, preparation onto the slides and into the sample bottle. Um, patient starts coughing, desaturates down to 70s, and pretty rapidly and uh, immediately you can see some alveolar hemorrhage. Um, and uh, patient in about two to three minutes actually des desaturated down to the 60s, with severe hypertension, became unresponsive. Uh, the team uh, code was called immediately and patient went to actually PE arrest patient had prolonged resuscitation, intubation, transferred to the ICU and eventually a family withdrew care. But I wanted to bring up some interesting procedure findings. And here it is again, the first thing you notice is immediately um, a, um, a small pneumothorax, which is not, not that uncommon with transthoracic needle aspirates and, and biopsies. Uh, alveolar hemorrhage, again, very common, but more worrying is actually um, this air fluid level in the air water, um, air within the pulmonary vein, air within the left atrium, and air within the coronary arteries. So um, certainly this is um, a very worrying, this patient actually progressed, the imaging was somewhat a secondary finding. Um, the patient obviously was the most important um, subject matter at that time, but review of these images shows some dramatic images, and certainly I think recognition of this um, is critical. The uh, operator actually did not uh, recognize this during the procedure because there was so much going on in the room. Um, but certainly, you know, the, the alveolar hemorrhage, you know, certainly was what people would most focus on. And because of the um, underlying airways, at times you just don't notice these things. But you can see the uh, increase in uh, air of the air within the left side of the heart. And certainly this is typical for an air embolus. So um, complications of um, transthoracic needle procedures are actually relatively rare. The most common pneumothorax and about half of those are going to require chest uh, uh, tube, um, and 
Well, Mormons, these, uh, for most uh, comfortable procedu uh, proceduralists, this is seen as part of the procedure. Um, alveolar hemorrhage actually uh, happens not infrequently. Most of them are subclinical and they don't progress on to anything significant. At, uh, every now and then you may need to place the patient um, on the ipsilateral side of the, uh, if it's progressive and to make sure that the patient um, doesn't um, asphyxiate and, and blood transfer onto the uh, contralateral lung or even require uh, unilateral intubation. Needle truck seeding is extremely rare. Empyemia or infection after a, a needle is very, very rare. But air embolus described only probably um, about 12 times in the literature in the last 30 years is extremely rare. It's rated, reported as 0.07%. Um, and um, on its own, uh, it's, it's comparatively extremely rare. So it's not something that you see uh, very, very often. In fact, I'd never seen one and I'd asked um, um, colleagues around whether they've ever had one. So this is not that common at all. Um, it's thought that a small amount of air was, is sufficient to actually be fatal, almost two cc's of air systemic onto the left side of the heart, or even 0.5 to 1 into the coronary arteries will cause a, a significant cardiac arrest. Um, it's certainly, I think, exacerbated patient coughs or raises the intrathoracic pressure and sucks the air onto the uh, uh, venous side. Um, and obviously, uh, I think under underlying uh, obstructive airways disease or bullous lung disease increases the risk of these. But still, the thousands of procedures that you see around the nation, very seldom you'll hear this described. And it's obviously a very interesting case. I thought it was uh, worthwhile highlighting. Um, the thought is that the embolism uh, uh, is caused in three ways, directly from the needle pass itself, or the needle traverses into a pulmonary vein, um, introduction, um, I mean, a, a, a hollow lumen, and sucking of the air into the pulmonary venous system. Um, sometimes through the pulmonary artery and then obviously the micro uh, circulation of the lung and then to the left side of the heart, but that usually is subclinical, it's very rare to be significant. You sometimes may see small amounts of air in the left side of the heart um, that are subclinical and you just notice on review of the images later. Uh, the thought process, the third is that the needle penetrates an air-containing structure um, that causes traversion and, and then leakage of air into the venous side. Again, very, very rare and not that uncommon. The treatment, obviously, um, you know, supplemental oxygen thought is to place the patient onto the left side, decubitus down, lower the head to dim diminish the risk of uh, the embolized air onto the left side of the heart it will go systemic in the arterial system into the intracranial portion. If it goes um, um, peripherally, it will, will have a less significant issue. Um, a lot of these, if they are detected and, and, and picked up intraprocedurally, the therapy that changes outcome is actually hyperbaric chamber uh, oxygen therapy. Um, this has been described in a, um, uh, several cases as opposed to reduce the risk of death by about 7%, um, and then support of so getting the patient through this. And the, the, the cases described in the literature actually do have cases that survive. Certainly in this case, this was extremely large volume of air that occurred, and it happened in, in, in minutes, as I, I, I was explained. So inclusion, even, uh, even though the paradigm of non -thora trans thoracic procedures are, you know, has a large role to play, even non-surgical biopsy options have significant risk, although they're pretty rare. I think, again, still to, you should uh, keep your decision-making algorithmic decisions and stick to guidelines. And obviously, in this type of uh, patient, recognition is key to reduce more embolism. And I'd argue even bronchoscopic needle procedures, you probably should be aware of this type of um, uh, com complication because I think um, if you do enough, I suppose the risks are there too. And then to know that the hyperbaric uh, oxygen chamber reduces mortality. Thank you very much.